Hello, in this video I'm going to teach you how to multiply and divide complex numbers that have been put into modulus argument form. And so for this you're obviously going to need to know what modulus argument form is, so if you don't I'll link my video on that below. So I'll add timestamps as usual to the different parts of the video so you can skip through to the part that you want to see. And we're going to start off with the generic rules for multiplication and division of complex numbers in this form. And for this you are going to need to know the sine and cosine angle addition formulas, but they're written right there. So if you haven't seen them before, that's what they are written in red. And I'll refer back to them anyway, so you should it should be quite easy. So let's look at multiplication first. Okay, so say we have two generic complex numbers in modulus argument form. Okay, and so by this I mean that for the complex number z1, its modulus is r1, and its argument is theta1, okay? And the same applies for complex number z2. So if we multiply them together, we're gonna to get something that looks like this here, okay? And so all I'm gonna do is simplify it a little bit and expand the brackets. And so what I mean by that is I'm gonna rearrange it so that r1 and r2 are just next to each other, just because it looks a bit nicer like this. And then I'm gonna expand my brackets. So I'm gonna get cosine theta1 multiplied by cos theta2, and then I'm going to add on to that i cos theta 1 multiplied by sine theta 2 plus i sine theta 1 cos theta 2. And finally, we're going to get, well, we've got i multiplied by i, so that's negative 1. So negative sine theta 1 multiplied by sine theta 2. Okay. And if you're unsure on how I got that, you could literally put the brackets next to each other and expand it for yourself. So once I've done this, okay, because this is a bit of a mess, I'm going to put the real parts, so this part here and this part here together, and then I'm going to bring the imaginary parts together, okay? So let's do that. So we're going to get this is equal to R1, R2, and then we're going to have the real part, so cos theta 1, cos theta 2, subtract sine theta 1, sine theta 2. And now when I write down my imaginary parts, I'm just going to factor out I from both of them. So we're going to get plus I, and then in brackets, cos theta 1 uh, sine theta 2 plus sine theta 1 cos theta 2 okay so the reason I've done this is because now we can use our angle addition formula so let's look at this part first where we've got cos theta 1 cos theta 2 subtract sine theta 1 sine theta 2 so this is going to refer to this angle addition formula there okay and if we take a look we're subtracting them so we're looking at this part which means that in our angle addition we're going to be adding them which means that that part that's highlighted in purple is going to be equal to well let's rewrite it down so we've got r1 multiplied by r2 and that's going to be the same as cos theta 1 at plus theta 2 okay and then we're going to do the exact same thing but with this part here and we're going to use a different angle addition formula so we've got cos theta 1 sine theta 2 plus sine theta 1 um, cos theta 2 and so this is referring to this angle addition formula here okay and because we're doing the addition part we're going to be adding our angles with sine and so we're going to get plus i sine theta 1 plus theta 2 Okay, now the reason I've done this is because this is going to make it really easy now when we want to multiply complex numbers together because this tells me that all I have to do is multiply the moduli together and then just add the arguments and that will give me my answer for when I multiply two complex numbers. Let's now do the same thing but for division. Okay, so I've got the same two generic complex numbers and we're dividing them. Okay, so we've got something that looks like this. So from here, all I'm going to do is multiply this, this whole part here by one, okay? And the way I'm gonna do that is by multiplying it by cos theta two, subtract i sine theta two, okay? All divided by the same thing because we're multiplying by one. Now, the reason I've done this, okay, you will see when I expand because it's gonna give us a really nice result. So we're gonna say, whoops, we're gonna say this is equal to, let's keep the r1 r2 over r2 out here. Now, let's multiply the numerator. So we're gonna get cos theta 1 multiplied by cos theta 2. Then we're going to subtract i cos theta 1 sine theta 2 plus i sine theta 1 cos theta 2. And then finally we've got i multiplied by negative i, so that's going to give me plus 1, so plus sine theta 1 sine theta 2. Okay. And if you're unsure, again, you could put brackets around it and expand it yourself just to check how I got this. So this is all going to be divided by um, the denominator, so let's expand that. So we've got cos squared theta 2, okay? Subtract i sine theta 2 cos theta 2 plus i sine theta 2 cos theta 2. And then finally, we've got plus because we've got i multiplied by negative i, so we've got plus sine squared theta 2, 
Okay. Now you'll notice these two parts cancel out. And so on the denominator, we're left with cos squared theta 2 plus sine squared theta 2, which is another trig identity, and that's going to be equal to 1. So now let's rewrite what we've got. We've got r1 over r2. And then now we can just forget about the denominator because it's equal to 1. And so we're left with the numerator, which I'm now going to, again, sort into the real and imaginary parts. So I'm going to collect these two real parts. And then I'm going to put these two imaginary parts together and then factor out the i, similar to what I did at the start. So we're going to get cos theta 1, cos theta 2, plus sine theta 1, sine theta 2. And then I'm going to factor out plus i, and we've got plus i, sine theta 1, cos theta 2, subtract cos theta 1, sine theta 2. Okay? Now, let's take a look at our angle addition formulas again, looking at this part here. So the cos theta 1, cos theta 2, plus sine theta 1, sine theta 2. So let's get rid of this. So we've got, let's take a look. So we're looking at this top one. Okay, and because we're adding them, okay, we're going to be subtracting our arguments in this case, or our angles. Okay, so we're going to get for the denominator, or not the denominator, sorry, the first part, we're going to get r1 over r2, and then we're going to get cos theta 1, whoops, subtract theta 2, okay, and then we're going to add on plus i, and then let's look at what angle addition formula that relates to, so sine theta 1 cos theta 2, subtract the other part, so we've got looking at this one here, and because we're subtracting them, we're going to be subtracting our angles or arguments in this case, and so we're going to be left with plus i sine theta 1 subtract theta 2, like this. And so through doing this, we find out when we're dividing complex numbers in modulus argument form, we just have to divide the moduli and then subtract the arguments. So let's have a look at an example using this because it's going to make it a bit clearer if it isn't already. Okay, so let's look at an example where we've got two complex numbers, z1 and z2, and we want to multiply them together. So using what we just learned, all we need to do really is multiply the moduli and add the arguments. So our moduli are 5 and 3. So to find z1 multiplied by z2, we're going to do 5 multiplied by 3, which is 15, and then just add our arguments. So we're going to do pi over 4 plus pi over 2. So we're going to get cos pi over 4 plus pi over 2 plus i sine pi over 4 plus pi over 2. Now, if we simplify this, we're going to get this is equal to 15 cos 3 pi over 4 plus i sine 3 pi over 4. Pretty easy, right? Now, the only thing you need to be careful is um, with is that if we're adding arguments and it goes outside our range of negative pi to pi, which is what our argument can be, then we're going to have to add or subtract multiples of 2 pi to get us back into that range. Okay, but that's all you need to really be careful with with this. Let's now take a look at the second example where we're dividing. And so remember, all we do is divide the um, arguments, or sorry, divide the moduli and then subtract the arguments. So we're going to do 5 divided by 3, so 5 over 3. And then we're going to get cos pi by 4, subtract pi over 2, plus i sine, again, pi over 4, subtract pi over 2. So let's see what we get. We're, this is going to be the same as 5 over 3 cos uh, negative pi over 4 plus i sine negative pi over 4. And that is going to be our answer. So hopefully this video was useful. If it was, uh, like, subscribe and share this video and go over to my channel for tons more maths tutorials. Thanks for watching.